Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel and today we got the old but gold Children of Moltra. Let's speak about it a little bit, but before you enter my review, don't forget to comment, subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. Or you don't, if you don't like the review. Thank you. Okay, so Children of Morta is the game that truly surprised me. The limited looks I have seen made me expect something in the vein of Hyper Light Differ or even a Zelda SQ, but it's nothing like either. Like nothing either. Instead, Children of Morta is a roguelite action RPG that feels like a more narrative focused gauntlet with a little bit of Diablo mixed in. As various members of the Burson family, you attempt to discover the source of an evil corruption that is spreading throughout the land and treating your way of life. It's a heart-filled, satisfying and challenging adventure whose scene is dealt slightly by some performance issues. Saying too much about the story will do Children of Morta a disservice, but it's touching and delighted in brief vines between dangerous runs. You are given brief glimpses into the lives of the Bergsons and the relationship between different individuals in the family. The game begins with a brief prologue-like section that teaches you the basic roll, jump, dodge with the B button while attacking with the Y button. You can also use the right analog stick to attack, which works well with the two range characters. The first person you meet is John, who fights with a sword and shield, but he is quickly joined by Linda, an archer who will fire arrows and move at the same time. You gradually unlock four other characters and each one plays quite differently. Underwear the Bergson house is a chamber with a giant crystal surrounded by three gateways. The grandmother activities the crystals and the uses it brings to back to the house when your life meter runs out which gives narrative purpose to the roguelite elements of the game. Each gateway takes you to a ward that contains two or three areas, which each those divided into three or four floors. The overall objective is fairly straightforward. You take your choice character from the stretching floor to the end, where a boss encounter awaits. Defeating all the bosses in a given area releases a guardian spirit of swords that sheds light of the history of corruption and points you towards your next objective. Defeating enemies in the dungeons gives you experience points and gold drops as you might expect, but charms and reliefs are also present and can power up for that run, making it easier to reach and defeat the end of boss. Leading up gives you skill points that allow you to fill out a skill tree for each character that grant your damage dealing and control abilities. But a real near peak is that every few levels you open up a bonus that applies to every family member. For example, when Linda reaches the level 4, every Bergson receives a permanent boost to their movement speed. This mechanic encourages you to play as different family members that's, that's uncovered. The stick is that if you use one character too many times, they begin to suffer the effects of corruption, which reduce their maximum health by percentage and need to rest by sitting out a few runs. Gold can be used to purchase health, damage, uh, speed and other upgrades from the band the blacksmith. More upgrades become available as you find certain artifacts and documents in the dungeon, so exploring each floor thoroughly can and carefully is a good strategy early on while you are weaker and not flush with the cash. Other bonuses can be purchased as well, such as boost to experience gain and how often gemstones are dropped. Gemstones function as a type of currency within the dungeons themselves. They can be used to open locked chests to exchange the various items, like the uh, aforementioned relics with charms and a shopkeeper who randomly appears. The floor of each dungeon are randomly generated and contain different enemies and traps that change when you move to a new world. The pixel art of Children of Mortar is absolutely gorgeous, especially in the Bergson house. Incredibly many details and effective use of color make playing the game visual delight. Additionally, the excellent voice work of the narrator breathes even more life into the experience. There are instances where the simplicity of the graphics can make recognizing traps and other dungeons elements a little tricky. However, in terms of audio, the music during the final boss and quarter completely bugged up for me. Which meant that um, I missed out on all of the ending narration and theme. It's actually a spectacular sequence and I was pretty bummed 
that it was pretty ruined by audio glitch, so hopefully that gets fixed before a round on launch. Child of Mortal is one of the most wonderful surprises of the year, of the pandemic year, and it's in need to be our raider. The progression system and launchables mean that even an unsuccessful 20 minute run will yell tangible growth to make the next run easier. Those who aren't wholly into roguelites, like me, will still enjoy the variety actions of the gameplay. Better still, it's not impossible to be captivated by Berks and family, struggle for survival and togetherness against the formidable evil. The two-player co-op option is the cherry on the top of this exquisitely craft experience, however you choose to go through it. Child of Montra is absolutely must play. About the pros, beautiful pike arc style, hearts felt story about family and struggle, two players co-op, unique and varied progression system. About the cons, well the sleep, early difficulty curve, slow down when high numbers enemies is on the screen, I mean like the FPS is going down, audio bug during the final boss and ending. Uh, well that's it, that's it. Thank you for watching, don't forget to comment and subscribe, peace.